country. And you're still looking for Becquerec? <laughs> still looking for all kinds yeah. of stuff out there. Uh, Cuba, I forgot what the number was in Cuba. Is it 100 something? Over 300. Over 300. So you see that wow. when you get down further in the tropics, it's just amazing. But for Florida, I think it's around 105, maybe 110, depending on if you're a splitter or a lumper. <laughs> and we have about 49 of those. Of the 49, I've seen 38 in my 28 years here. So of the 10 that I haven't seen, probably four or five have been exportated. Those are kind of the lost orchids. They're not extinct. They're just not in Fakahatchee anymore. Uh, I think four of those were only found in the United States in Fakahatchee. Right. And the rat tail was one of those, yeah. bubble film and pachyrachis, which Dennis has been really working on that. Uh, Vermilion cap in the United States, too, with 14 native species of epiphytic vermilions. We have one that's nowhere else in the United States except Fakahatchee, the nodding catoxus. Uh, again, you go down to South America and they have hundreds. I think South America total has about 2,000 species. The yeah, state it's interesting. Border. The further south you go or towards the equator, the higher the diversity of orchids. Orchids are the most um, species family of plants on Earth. I think there's one other family that gives them a run for their yeah. money, but yeah. we're talking tens of thousands of species of orchids. And um, as you move away from the equator, the orchid numbers crash and grass numbers mm -hmm. really mm -hmm. rise. They go in the temper. Right? Yeah, so it's sort yeah. of like this. Sure. I think there's 270,000 bachelor plant species known to science, and I think 25 to 27,000 are orchids. orchids. So around 10%, 9 or 10% of all known vascular plant species are orchids. Wow. So it is a big family. I have no idea. So pretty cool. They've radiated. Well, I don't know. They're not a young family. They've been around a while. Yeah. A whole lot of uh, coevolution in there. Pollinators, but also fungi, too. Orchids are fascinating. They're indicators of the healthy environment, too. It's just amazing. Um, but that's some of the superlatives. Largest strand in the world. Largest unit in Florida Park Service. We cover about 80, 85,000 acres. Pretty small compared to Big Cypress National Preserve. Over 700,000 acres. Or Everglades National Park, one and a half million gigantic places. Um, Peperomia, we have five. From the southeast, except... The red wolf still occurs here in Fakahatchee. We yeah. have coyotes now instead we of have coyotes. red wolves. Mm -hmm. we, we would like to say we still have ivory bill woodpeckers. <laughs> so far, no evidence. <laughs> no, no. Every time I hear a pill aid, it's, ah, another ivory bill. So when you're seeing a strand, I mean, is it just because it's a, a long, yes. elongated? Yes, a strand is an elongated channel or a very shallow valley in the limestone, the substrate okay. of uh, the Everglades or Tamiami limestone here. And it isn't that deep, two to six feet, okay. uh, lower than the surrounding Morro prairies, which is like the flat mazes, I guess, on either side. Pines are just, what, inches higher than mm -hmm. the prairie. Uh, hammocks are one and a half to two feet higher than the prairie. Those are mountains, and that's where you get live oaks. Okay. And, of course, the cypress domes are usually circular, and they're lower by about one to two feet lower than the prairie. Right. Okay. And then this is anywhere from, if you're in a slough, it's two to three and a half or four feet below the prairie uh, it's all relative ground elevation. It's topography. Okay. I remember just first getting to the Fakahatchee thinking, wow, the ground is pretty flat here. You look at a topo map, it doesn't really mean anything. And so you think, at first, it's counterintuitive. You think, well, if this is that flat, topography must not be that important. It's the exact opposite. Because the land is so flat, topography is everything. Right. A few inches oh. up or down, completely different plant community. Yeah. So the vegetation shows you the topography. You know, Cypress Dome, you know it's low. You Pines, a little higher. Oaks and other hardwoods, you know it's even higher still. And of course on top of that, that's hydro period, on top of that is fire. So it's right. all a combination of hydro period and fire. That was a question during our ride. What's the um, fire regime? In the Morro Prairies, one to three years mm -hmm. seems to be the fire returnable for yeah. pretty much all the Everglades. Mm -hmm. Marshes, probably very similar, one to three. Lightning and Native Americans, that's what we're mimicking. Okay. Uh, pine flatwoods, two to five, mm -hmm. about two to five. Strand swamp? Never. We're not in charge of that. <laughs> you know, if, if well, Fakahatchee catches on years. fire, mm -hmm. get out of South Florida. <laughs> this but, is but virtually But after proof. saying that, right, the, the guava fire and the moonfish fire that I talked about in my speech, those were strands that burnt right. to the ground because, because of, of fire. Because of alterations in hydrology? Because of alterations in yeah. hydrology. Mm. Okay. So as long as we had, you know, before canals and all that alteration, the Fakahatchee and other large strands were virtually fireproof. Doesn't mean they didn't catch on fire. Lightning would hit, you get a little muck fire, you could walk right up to it. Look at this raging muck fire. It's burning underground. So that's what happened for 4,500 years old. That's about the age of the Big Cypress Swamp region of the Everglades ecosystem. It's 4,500 years old, the age of the pyramids. It's a fairly young experiment in ecology, actually. 
So muck fires did occur, even in strands with lightning, and it would be a small area, maybe acres that would burn May, June, maybe even July. Here comes the water table by August, mm. flooding it. So it might burn as a muck fire for one, two, or three months. I think Oki Finoki, same way. So all you do at the end of that two or three month period of combustion is you have a lower swamp. Now it's deeper. Mm -hmm. So it'll take a few centuries to fill it back up. So you get that, just that difference between decomposition versus deposition, and it's mm. over centuries. Yeah, so it's a real habitat mosaic out here. And it's spatial diversity as well as topographic diversity. And every little piece is on a different trajectory. It's chaos. Ecology <laughs> <laughs> is chaos. Speaking of chaos. Love it. This entire strand was logged in the late 1940s and early 50s. And after the industrial logging period, there was a lot of slash on the ground. And you had a swamp, a, uh, a, a primary forest, essentially, that was leveled and exposed to the sun and the drying effects and fires that were either natural or set in pyrogenic habitat, prairies or pines, entered the swamp and there's a huge area up here just east of east maine yep. that is now a mixed swamp it's dominated by willow and red maple button bush button bush that was a giant fire inside the strand post logging and i don't think there's cypress in that yet so that was in the 50s it set the clock back yeah. to zero yeah, yeah. so they call it the shield cypress, yeah, yeah the cypress like size what was the Oh gosh, the, the uh, here's five like feet. Some of them were two to three, some were four, some were five, a few were six. Every once in a while there was a seven. These are diameters. Right, right. And every once in a while there probably was even an eight. Okay. Not many of those, but you know. The they were, old growth canopy yeah. was probably between 80 and 100 feet above yeah, the ground. Okay. Wow. In some places those giant canopies interlocked, so there was a novel mm -hmm. ecosystem up there wow. that doesn't right. exist and anymore. And probably below. That's yeah, and below. That's right. Right, yeah. the sloughs, wow. the potash pineapple sloughs were under that super canopy, and it was a, a whole lot of rainforest in there. Yeah. yeah. All that humidity was held in by that <clears throat> upper layer, creating the, you know, layer to prevent the desiccation out, and then the potash pond apple and all the water in those sloughs, plus mm -hmm. the muck. 4,500 years of deposition. So, Hydro so, period is about eight months in this yeah. strand, 250 days. So, wow. Craig, has there been any, like, looking at the Miccosukee traditional vegetation that's not here? I know with the flooding of the Missouri River, some vegetations were lost. And, you know, folks have the names and they keep trying to associate it with a plant that's so, here, you know, that's still around, but probably not with when you have that large growth. So, so, so the Miccosukee were pushed into here, I think, relatively recently. Oh, okay. And so, so but the, the biggest thing that's disappeared is that they used to use the, 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 the cypress for canoes. Okay. Canoes that were large enough, they used to paddle to Cuba in. Oh, that's oh. Yeah. And so those trees don't exist, so they can't, in the sense, they can't practice their culture of mm. teaching their children right. how to make those canoes. Right. Because the trees just don't exist. Is there anywhere in Florida that's left yeah. with those large? Well, it, yes, uh, Corkscrew Swamp is yeah. a good place to see that ancient prim uh, uh, primary swamp yeah. forest. Um, so if you ever get a chance to go to the Corkscrew Swamp boardwalk, I highly recommend it. That's about 750 acres. Where's it at? It's north of here. It's about, as the crow flies, about 25 miles north of here. It's incredible. It's National Audubon. Society. We have 215 acres of old growth bald cypress at our boardwalk at Big Cypress Town. Yeah, and that's worth a look too. It's okay. just if you go back down to 41, instead of going east back to the resort, go west about five miles, and there's a boardwalk that goes through the old growth cypress yeah. here. It's pretty cool. Okay. I just found out about the Barley Barber Swamp. I think it's Lee County Electric no, it's not. It's uh, Florida it, Power and Light. Right. It's been 300 acres. Yeah. yeah so that's more than our 215. We're number three. <laughs> <laughs> so about 750 at Audubon, somewhere in there. 300 at the Barley Barber Swamp yeah. of old growth bald cypress, and we have 215. I think that's your biggest tracks in Florida of old growth bald cypress. Okay. And in the Withlacoochee Forest, there's some too. A few acres, maybe, or 100, or yeah. Yeah. Okay, no. so that might be the fourth. Yeah, yeah there are individuals rare. out there that are old growth that have never been logged, but there are very few stands mm -hmm. of old growth yeah. cypress left. Mm -hmm. And some of our trees are probably 300 to 500 years old. It's so hard to date the dendrochronic fall tree. Mm -hmm. 
I think Mike Duber was telling me they did a project at Corkscrew Swamp Audubon Sanctuary and their oldest were 550. And it looks like fire went through and wiped out the whole swamp 550 years ago. So if we didn't have that same fire, then some of our cypress were probably older than 550. Mm -hmm. But mm -hmm. we don't but know. Tony mm -hmm. was saying when they were doing the oil exploration, some of the four DBH yes. diameter trees were 200 plus years old. Right. Right. But they were only this big, right? Oh, because right. Of right. Really? The, the hat rack right. type so stuff? Yeah. Yeah. 200 yeah. years old? Yeah, yeah. plus. Yeah. 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 Well, well there we go. go. Put us in a slew and see what we can see. Yeah. 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 Yeah.